Welcome back, my friends. As you all know, many YouTubers are talking about real estate. Some are predicting a collapse. Others are cheerleading for a new surge in real estate prices. But most of these people are talking about residential real estate. Almost nobody is discussing commercial real estate. This despite the fact that we are hearing headlines about vacant office space. Figueroa Street in Los Angeles is the epicenter of a wave of defaults on office towers. Mortgage defaults have hit downtown Los Angeles as demand for office space continues to decline. Brookfield Corp. A major office owner in the area, defaulted on $784 million worth of loans on two towers, according to an SEC filing on February 10. So, what does this mean for commercial real estate? What does this mean for the real estate industry? What does this mean for the future of the economy? And, what does it mean for the future of the United States? But, before we get into that, please press the like button and leave us a comment below. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. And, before we continue, a word from the sponsor of this video. Today's sponsor is InnerLife.com, creator of the InnerLife STS system. InnerLife STS is a cloud mobile platform for mental health care and its integration with primary medical care. InnerLife STS is designed for assessment, data collection and analytics, documentation, and progress tracking. InnerLife STS creates and composes conceptualized narratives and builds them into professional-grade reports. These reports are designed for use by mental health professionals, primary care physicians, justice system professionals and universities and include mental health assessment reports, mental health treatment reports, and treatment progress reports. And InnerLife STS uses doctor-selected pseudonames for all patients. So, only the healthcare professional knows the patient identity. Figueroa Street in Los Angeles is the epicenter of a wave of defaults on office towers. Mortgage defaults have hit downtown Los Angeles as demand for office space continues to decline. Brookfield Corp. A major office owner in the area, defaulted on $784 million worth of loans on two towers, according to an SEC filing on February 10. Brookfield Corp. One of the largest public real estate companies in the world, has defaulted on $161.4 million worth of office building mortgages, according to a report from Bloomberg. High office vacancy and interest rate hikes have contributed to a string of defaults this year and fueled concerns of a commercial. Brookfield DTLA refers to a large mixed-use development project in downtown Los Angeles, California, developed by Brookfield Properties. The project spans over 5 million square feet and includes multiple buildings, including the renovated 1970s-era gas company tower, along with new construction buildings. The development includes luxury residential units, Class A office space, retail and restaurant space, and a five-star hotel. The project is also designed with sustainability in mind, incorporating environmentally friendly features such as green roofs and solar panels. Brookfield DTLA is located in the heart of downtown Los Angeles and is part of a broader revitalization effort of the area. The project has played a significant role in transforming the city's skyline and has become a notable landmark in the city's downtown core. Defaulting on an office tower means that the owner or borrower of the property has failed to make payments or meet other obligations related to the financing of the property. This can include missed mortgage payments, failure to pay property taxes or insurance, or breaches of other contractual obligations with lenders or investors. When a property owner or borrower defaults on an office tower, it can trigger a series of legal and financial consequences. For example, the lender or investor may initiate foreclosure proceedings, in which the property is seized and sold in order to repay the outstanding debt. The borrower may also face legal action and damage to their credit score. In some cases, defaulting on an office tower can also have broader implications for the real estate market and the wider economy. If the default is part of a broader trend of distressed properties, it can contribute to a decline in property values and a tightening of credit for real estate projects. It is therefore important for property owners and borrowers to manage their finances and obligations carefully to avoid defaulting on their properties. Brookfield DTLA is owned by Brookfield Properties, a subsidiary of Brookfield Asset Management. Brookfield Asset Management is a global alternative asset management company that owns and manages a diverse portfolio of real estate, infrastructure, renewable power, and private equity assets around the world. Brookfield Properties, which is responsible for the day-to-day -day management and operations of Brookfield DTLA, 
is one of the largest commercial real estate companies in the world, with a portfolio of over 600 properties encompassing more than 325 million square feet of space. Brookfield Properties is a subsidiary of Brookfield Asset Management, a global alternative asset management company. Brookfield Asset Management owns and manages a diverse portfolio of real estate, infrastructure, renewable power, and private equity assets around the world. The company was founded in 1899 and is headquartered in Toronto, Canada. Today, Brookfield Asset Management has over $600 billion in assets under management and operates in more than 30 countries, with a focus on investing in high-quality assets that generate long-term value for its investors. It's a major sign of struggle when huge office landlords are defaulting on their loans. Brookfield is the largest office landlord in downtown Los Angeles. And now Brookfield is suffering blows from dissolving demand and rising interest rates. The corporation defaulted on loans tied to two office skyscrapers in the city. The gas company Tower. And the 777 Tower. These two iconic buildings carry loans totaling $784 million. The gas company Tower is a skyscraper located in downtown Los Angeles. It is a 52-story building that stands at a height of 757 feet. It is one of the tallest buildings in Los Angeles. The gas company Tower was designed by the architecture firm Skidmore, Owings & Merrill. It was completed in 1991. It was built for the Southern California Gas Company. It actually served as the company's headquarters until 2015. Today, the gas company Tower is home to a variety of office tenants. It is considered a prominent landmark in downtown Los Angeles. The building is located at the intersection of 5th and Olive Streets. It is within walking distance of many of the city's major attractions and cultural institutions. The 777 Tower is a high-rise office building located in downtown Los Angeles. It is a 52-story skyscraper that stands at a height of 725 feet. It is also one of the tallest buildings in Los Angeles. The 777 Tower was completed in 1991. The building offers approximately 1.4 million square feet of office space. The 777 Tower is located at the intersection of 7th and Figueroa Streets. That is considered a prime location in downtown Los Angeles. The building is within walking distance of many of the city's major attractions. The Staples Center. The Los Angeles Convention Center. And the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Lenders have not yet foreclosed on the two properties. The properties are included in a portfolio named Brookfield DTLA Fund Office Trust Investor. But Brookfield declined to extend the maturity on the financing tied to the 52-story gas company tower at 555 West 5th Street. It's a major sign of struggle when Brookfield, the largest office landlord in downtown Los Angeles, is suffering blows from dissolving demand and rising interest rates, said Bloomberg. The corporation defaulted on loans tied to two office skyscrapers in the city. Brookfield's portfolio has a total of $2.28 billion in secured debt. Office vacancies have increased across the United States. The downtown LA market has been struggling even since before the pandemic. The vacancy in the central business district is up to 24.5%. Wells Fargo is stepping back from the multi-trillion dollar market for US mortgages. This comes amid regulatory pressure. And as the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, Wells Fargo will now only offer home loans to existing bank and wealth management customers. The banking giant thinks that the lending market has collapsed. As you probably know by now, the Federal Reserve began aggressively raising rates last year. Real estate values have fallen across the nation. And macroeconomic factors are weakening overall. So, many investors have current needs for cash and need to liquefy some of their assets. Blackstone and Starwood Capital Group are drawing attention from the Securities and Exchange Commission. The real estate funds have recently seen a surge in withdrawal requests. It comes amid a broad drop in investor sentiment and potential economic downturn. This led both private equity giants to pause redemptions. After monthly and quarterly withdrawal limits were reached, investors in and outside of the funds took notice. Assets flowed into the fund and it was a success, at least for a few years. The Blackstone Wright amassed $68 billion in assets. But what a difference a year makes. The real estate market in the United States has reversed course. And investor sentiment is turning bearish, to say the least. Blackstone has taken heat over the past week for limiting withdrawals from the $69 billion private right. As you might imagine in a degrading real estate market, 
publicly traded rights have gotten slammed this year. If you follow this channel, you already know that the Federal Reserve is aggressively raising interest rates. And the rising interest rate environment is sending real estate values into decline. The real estate market has been hit hard, especially commercial real estate. Practically everyone is raising questions about the actual values of real estate. That is especially true of the real estate holdings in private funds such as Blackstone's Breed. Just as a comparison, the $35 billion Vanguard real estate ETF has plummeted 26% year to date. But, what do you think? Please press the like button and leave us a comment below. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you are notified of upcoming videos. Please share this video on social media. Thank you for watching.